Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's video, I thought I'd do a quick demonstration on how I create split pictures using Affinity Photo. So if you're interested in seeing how I created posts like these on my Instagram account, just keep on watching. So I use Affinity Photo to do all of my photo editing, and I'll have a link to Affinity down below in the description box if you're interested in checking them out. Affinity's functions and shortcuts are very similar to Photoshop, so although the windows may not look exactly the same if you're f familiar with Photoshop, many of these skills will translate pretty smoothly. So right now I have Affinity open on my computer. I have the files that I'm planning on using already open, so we'll just jump right into it. So the first picture you see here is the pastel drawing that I had posted of my bird, Craig. The next picture I have is the reference picture I was using, but I want to overlay part of my reference picture onto my drawing to create that split picket effect. So if you're not familiar what split picks are, it's basically a either a smooth transition between two images or an abrupt transition between two images of the same subject in the same position. Um, so if you are drawing realistically like I am with this drawing, if you were to place part of the photo adjacent to part of the drawing, it should be pretty seamless where the transition line would be. In many cases, if you have a subject that is facing straight at the camera and it, there is a line of symmetry vertically that runs straight down the middle of your drawing, that is very easy. So I'm going to show you the line of symmetry of Craig. So he's kind of split diagonally from the upper right hand corner to the lower left hand side. Another thing to consider is um, my knee is in the picture, which is not very attractive. So I do not want to have my, my knee in the post that I want to share on Instagram because that's not very flattering. And you also see my very messy desk and YouTube in the background. So all of these things are kind of distracting. So instead of including all of those items, I think I will strategically place my cropping of my photo so that it's more of a suitable background. So when I'm planning on doing my post with a split pick, I will probably do something like this. There would be a split diagonally and the part that I plan on showing is the bottom right hand side of the picture and the upper left hand side will be covered or will be my pastel drawing. So that's the general way I'm going to approach this. So looking at my two pictures, um, I find it easier to typically do the photo reference overlaid on top of my drawing image. Um, that's just how I normally do it. So I have my fairly high resolution drawing picture up here and now I'm going to crop it similarly to how I just showed you on the photo. When you crop, you can select the dimensions. So because Instagram has a square format, I can click the one to one format here and reposition it. So I'm going to crop and have the picture focused mainly on his head. So there we go. To copy, I'm just going to press Control C and paste with Control V. Oh, what's going on? And so you'll see that my resolution on my drawing was better than the photo I was working with. So in order to work with that, I'll just resize it a little bit. So 
In order to have the photo and the drawing aligned, the easiest way I found is to pinpoint markers uh, on my drawing that I know should match up to my photo and basically scale the photo accordingly. So this is my drawing. In Photoshop it might be a slightly different, but I'm going to make a series of guide markers. And to do that, have the Move tool selected, click on the ruler, and that will automatically make this blue guideline that you see here that I'm moving. So the markers I want to line up are typically going to be facial features like eyes, noses, and mouths. So for Craig, I'm going to put a marker at the top of his eye, another marker at the tip of his beak, and another marker at the top of his beak. So I have three points that I know should line up with my picture. So looking at my picture, it's the top of the eye is lined up, the top of the beak is lined up, I might need to scale it a little bit for the bottom of the beak. And then to align it horizontally, I will still have my photo selected. I will reduce the opacity so that I can slightly see through to the bottom layer. And all we're doing is sliding the picture over. So you can see that there are a few discrepancies where the outline of or the profile of Craig's head doesn't quite match up with my reference photo. So in my drawing, I had the top of his head slightly larger and also his cheek on the left hand side of the drawing is slightly bigger, um, but that's okay. The main thing is that the main facial features line up. So I'm going to restore the full opacity of the picture and we are going to just do a quick check. One of the important things about creating a split pick is masking. Um, if you're not familiar with the concept of masking is, I'll leave a useful affinity tutorial in the description box. But basically when you make a mask, you're allowing some parts of your layer to show through and you are covering other parts. Um, so we are going to make a mask that will cover half of the photo and allow half of the drawing to show through. So if you wanted to do an abrupt transition, one way would just be to erase half of the photo. So if I wanted to do a very rough transition, I can go ahead with the polygon selection tool and just draw a line straight through the middle and just press delete. Um, this line is quite harsh and it's a matter of personal taste that I personally don't really care for um, a very sharp transition like this one. Especially if you're drawing a furry animal, any mismatch in fur will definitely be very apparent. So instead of doing a sharp transition, I do what's called a gradual transition. So I will undo that deletion and show you how I create my mask. So I will make a new layer. I will click the gradient tool, create a linear gradient. And don't worry, we're going to fix the gradient. So it's not a big deal. One side of the gradient will be transparent, so I'm adjusting the opacity to zero. The other side will be black. And whatever is black is what will be, be preserved. So most times when I do a gradient, I don't do a gradient that's very gradual. I try to do a gradient that has a pretty strong transition. 
so the distance between the two colors is quite short. So to create our mask, the gradient that we just made is located on the layer above the photo. We are going to click that layer, that gradient layer, click mask to below, and that will create our mask. So our drawing is located on the upper left hand section of the square and our photo is on the lower right hand side. And you can see that there is a pretty smooth transition running along that diagonal we just made. If I wanted to adjust the mask or just to see what it would look like in different ways, I can find the mask layer by pressing Alt and clicking the mask layer. So if I wanted to play around with what it looked like in different formats, I can just drag the two points of the gradient around so that just shows it split horizontally, split vertically, but you can see that if you're your split lines up with a line of symmetry on your subject, that tends to be the most attractive way to present a split picture. So I'm going to narrow the distance to create a more seamless transition. Leave it like that. So to clean up the area, I'm just going to hide the guides I made. I can zoom out. And you can see it's a pretty nice transition from the drawing and photo. So a additional step if you'd like to do something a little bit more fancy is to add labels. And so since I do split picks quite often, I have a template set up here where it has my watermark in the center on the bottom, drawing and photo. So if it happens to be switched, I can just swap the text. Or if it's vertical or horizontal split, I can just move the boxes around. I'm just going to copy. And then because, oops, so this is a pretty large file, as you can tell. So this is much larger than Instagram's 1080 by 1080 recommended size. This is probably double that size at least. Save it as, as a large size and then resize it. And save it again in, a, in the standard size. So, so my template size is 1080 by 1080. So now if I paste it onto my split pick, it should match up perfectly and it does. So that saves you some time if you decide that you'd like to do this kind of format more than you know once every month or so. Um, having a template set up is great. It will save you at least 15 minutes of work. And so when we zoom out, which would be how small your picture would probably show up on someone's phone or computer. You want to make sure that the text is easy to read. So a lot of mistakes I see people make is they'll choose a font that is difficult to read. So for example, if I changed the drawing text to be something like a more script-like font, like Edwardian script. Um, so you'll notice that it looks fine on the screen because we're seeing it in such a large format. But when I zoom out, especially with phones, I don't think you can even make out what that says. It, you see something that looks like a D, but everything else looks just like parallel lines. So this would be an example of a font that's probably not appropriate um, in this use. So I would recommend something simple that's not script. My go-to is 
either Ariel or Calibri. Um, and so when you zoom out, you can still clearly read that it says drawing and photo. And the final step is to export the picture you just made. So I'll do file, export. I would double check that the size is 1080 by 1080. Um, the quality doesn't need to be very good because most people aren't going to, you know, enlarge your photo. So I keep it around 70-80% quality. Export. Make sure you name your file something that makes sense. And that's it. So if we go to our folder with our, all of our photos in it and I click the picture we just made and enlarge it. It's a very nice transition between the drawing and the photo. I also have my watermark. This file is now ready to upload to Instagram. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos from me, I do have a whole playlist of drawing time lapses that I have on my YouTube channel that you can check out and I'll have that link listed down below. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.